From In the Beginning to the Musical Apocalypse, this is The Bible Says What. I'm your host, Mike Wiseman. One can trick themselves into believing almost anything. Personally, I have the special ability to hit green lights more often than others. Why? Because my green light God has saved me from the evil red lights. Sometimes bad things happen and I do get a red light. When that happens, it's because my green light God is testing me or I've angered him in some way. I am pawn scum and therefore on occasion need to be taught lessons in character. Because he loves me, he's making me suffer through red lights no matter how late I am. Perhaps he's teaching me patience or keeping me from getting into a major accident. My green light God is the best. It's a personal relationship with reality. If you want more grace through green lights, say these magic words with me and you too can be saved from the dreaded red light. Ready? Green light God, I understand that I am pawn scum and must be saved. I accept you into my gas pedal, allowing me to use it more often. That's it. There it is. You will now notice a change in your life. Maybe next time you're running late for your sister's funeral, those green lights will align ever so nicely. Let's start the show. Is there anything in the Bible that you yourself have an issue with? <laughs> Okay, so it took you reading the Bible to realize that those things were bad for you? Yeah, it actually did. I, I didn't you figure I, this out on your own? No, Ted, Ted Bundy could be redeemed. God doesn't kill children. Does, what, what do you think the Passover was? Yahweh sets up a whole system in the Old Testament where you slaughter animals just so he's able to forgive you. Today's special guest is Christian director and theologian John Christie. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for taking the time. I know we've been trying to do this for a while. I'm very excited to have you on. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, well, in this realm, uh, going on now 10 years ago, I uh, made a Christian, not, not a Christian film. I made a documentary film called My Week in Atheism hmm. uh, with my friend David Smalley and I spent what started out to be a week turned into a year of um, shows uh, of his, you know, podcast episodes, as well as uh, debates, discussions at uh, University of North Texas, at Skepticon, at American Atheist Convention. And it really was more of an exploratory um, film of me getting to understand and know atheism from atheists rather than, you know, through, through my degree and stuff, I've studied atheism, read all the literature, I've read all the, the apocalypse men and all their books, and as well as many, many, many more still reading to this day. And, uh, but it, I wanted to get outside of the books and into the, the people. And so, you know, here, atheism from atheists and go that direction with it. And, um, and so we made a movie about it. And uh, that was 10 years ago. And since then, um, you know, I've done some podcasting of my own, not as faithful or consistent as I would like to be. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I do have a full time job that occupies a lot of my time and a family that occupies a lot of my time. So I do yeah. it when I can and as I can involved in my local church, you know, again, same thing as I can when I can. Um, but, you know, still at it and still, um, still out there trying to understand more about people, about God, theology itself, atheism, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, trying to teach some and uh, discuss some and still doing things like this. Awesome, man. Awesome. Staying busy. That's for sure. Holy cow. Family and yeah. full-time <laughs> job. That'll do it. Podcasting yeah. Yeah, on top of it. Holy cow, man. Yeah. Um, so what did you, what was like the, the biggest takeaway from your, your journey in atheism there about atheists at the time? Um, I think the biggest takeaway, and I, and I think I say, I do say this in the film, even towards the end is, you know, the biggest thing that came to me was how much of a movement it was. And by that, I really mean more of a political movement, um, maybe more, you know, you could say a social movement, but, you know, very much it was beyond just, uh, belief in a God. And it had to do with how that affects us in our daily lives, how people vote, how laws mm. are made, how the government is run and things to that extent, um, you know, which now has extended all the way to you see this in a routine basis. What I often say is 
back then, a lot of the buzzwords, a lot of the uh, the phrasing that I would hear, not to not to discredit it by calling it buzzwords, but mm-hmm. the key terms that were used amongst the atheists, I started about five years ago really hearing primarily on the left, on the liberal side of politics, things like following the science, um, you know, things like that, autonomy of, of myself and different mm-hmm. phrases and, and phrases and stuff that, you know, I, I was like, wow, this is, I've heard this all before, but it really struck me how, you know, looking back, um, a lot of what the atheist movement was telling me then has now become aligned with what a lot of the left politics are. And so you see really this, what I say, the, the Christian right and the atheist left um, is really, I would say, probably Interesting. how I classify the two. So, huh. Yeah, I love that you threw the politics in there with all that. That's very interesting. I, I see it as, as as yes, it does dive into the politics, but because it's more of a rational position and people are starting to, uh, forgive the phrase, but wake up. Um, and, and I do like the the trusting in the. Oh, science. I absolutely agree with. I, yeah. I agree with that mentality. I don't. I don't yeah. agree that what you said is true, but I do mm-hmm. agree that that's the that's the mentality, and that's exactly what I mean. That's what I see now happening in politics is the woke movement was what the atheists were calling the woke movement of, you know, there is no God. This was, you know, 2008, 2007 timeframe, 2010, yeah. that time frame when I was really getting into it um, or started getting into it. And yeah, they were woke in, in the atheist view. And that, even that phrase wake and woke has hmm. come into, again, you hear it in the politics now. Yeah. But one of the, the awake or woke things I think of, like, like you had mentioned is trust the science. Yeah. Now, is that a bad thing? Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. If we're truly following science, honest with it. Well, yeah. I think uh, I th- I I honestly believe um, there's truth to there being a scientism, more hmm. of a a belief in science rather than a belief of what science has proven. Meaning, meaning, often yeah. people will, will refer to science as it it is a thing. The science is settled. Well, we all know. It, well, we don't all know. We should understand if we've studied anything about science that, first of all, it's never settled. Well, <laughs> it's always open. Um, and so there's there's reasons to believe things. Right. They, Levels I mean, of certainty. Gets to the, as far yeah, as we go and it with gets the, science, to the premise yeah. of why technically there's no scientific fact. Everything is technically a theory because if ever disproven. But yet there's a lot of scientism going on where we talk about science like it's an act. It's an absolute truth. It's a hmm. it's something that we can we can grab a hold of and learn something from the way we speak, Christians speak about a God. Um, <laughs> science is very much spoken in that term. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. But we should trust the science, but not completely, such as the way Christians trust God. Is that, is that where I'm going with this? Where you're going with this? Um, yeah. It, it, again, it's tough because I, I don't compare science to God. Meaning, again, I don't see science as a thing. I see God as a thing. I see science as a means of experimentation and understanding, you know, the world around us. And, yeah. and by that, really, I see it as understanding the physical world around us, um, hmm. meaning not the metaphysical world around us. Um, science doesn't deal with that per se. Uh, you know, yeah. in theory, I guess it can. But um, I don't know if we're we're going off on a tangent. Okay. This, but I we, love that's where the show goes, man. We just go fine. everywhere. That's yeah. right. I love it. All right, like, we we could be talking about Genesis next. I don't even know. Like, uh, so yeah. physical versus the uh, metaphysical. Yeah, and we can't use science to test for the metaphysical. We can't use science to test for God. Correct. Correct. What do we use to test for God? I think I think the same thing we use to test for the. The medical, but let, let me not say medical, physical. Let me say for the, for the unknown, mm-hmm. right? That which we can't physically um, manifest, touch, feel, we use logic and reason. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, the basis of science, you know, the, the reason why scientists receive a PhD is because it's a degree in philosophy. Mm-hmm. You know, and one of the things science does um, very often, again, is theorize and then make attempts to prove that theory disprove but they don't disprove or yeah or disprove or yeah. disprove yeah I, I guess to look at look at it that way mm. um but they make attempts i i would i would say that yeah they make attempts to to disprove the theory by attempting to i guess you would have to say to 
discover. Let me give it to you this way. The, 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 the way that I always, <laughs> give it to me, I always use it is the uh, the Higgs boson, the, the God yeah. particle. Mm. You know, and I'm not a scientist, but mm. I understand um, this realm of the philosophy. Uh, you know, I am more of a philosopher. Theology, philosophy, it's part of the, it's part of the study. Mm. Um, and so with that, I can speak to the philosophy of science, but I'm not really a scientist. So I'm not, not at all a scientist. But um, anyway, they theorized of the existence of this particle and the math added up and everything was based on it should be this way. And the reason it should be this way is because based on logic and reasoning Mm -hmm. and mathematics added into that, they had theorized that this God particle should exist under these conditions of slamming protons, neutrons, electrons, whatever they're slamming into each other. Mm -hmm. And, um, and eventually it came to be proven, you know, that they found it. And it did exist yeah. because it made sense. Mm. That's how I see, in a sense, we discover God through logic and reasoning, not through necessarily, not through physical interaction. God has spoken to man, has revealed himself to man in a physical way, mm. um, particularly in what we know as Jesus Christ. But we find God through, through other means of, again, our emotions, our logic, our reasoning, our immaterial well, parts. Not that's, that's a lot of claiming parts. there, John. Slow down. Slow down the claim train. Okay, oh. I will. Slow me down. <laughs> Go ahead. So how many of the particles did they theorize that were wrong? You're talking about with the God particle? Yeah. We had so to have had a lot of theories that were wrong to get to the right one, correct? Well, they had a lot of experimentation that... I, I hesitate at saying disproved it, but that didn't pan out. Didn't pan out, yeah. yeah. Or, or they, they were trying to find other particles. I, we, we've theorized a lot of things that didn't turn out. That's yeah, kind of what I'm going to. And, and basically, uh, again, with my non-science description, that God particle is yeah. kind of the smallest atom. I don't know if you'd label it as an atom, but the smallest particle yeah. that we can find, and, and, it, and it existed inside of, atoms that would be slammed against each other and exploded. And so Mm. they spent, you know, millions, if not, I don't know if it was billions, but millions of dollars to create this uh, tunnel type of machine or whatever that would. Yes, exactly. It would speed them into each other. The bike that rides around and yeah. 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 I saw the documentary too. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And, And so the reason why I think that's so appropriate is because when you consider how much they invested into this thing, to discover something that they had no reason to believe other than hmm. logic and reason dictated that it should be there. And hmm. then they eventually found it. And I think that's very similar to God is that we have logic and reason to get us there. Hmm. And then many of us, I'll say, find him. Many do not. And there's, you know, we'd have to, we could talk about the reasons of that and, and why, but yeah. Basically, the point I'm using in that is it's the same thing. Is we put a lot of faith, trust into the science to find this God particle, and lo and behold, they eventually found it by a success. Using test. physical things to find the the theory, yeah, and and, and that's the problem Correct. with God using is we can't things, use physical right. things to test for an unknown entity that doesn't interact in the physical realm. No, I I think we 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 can. From the standpoint of we can, again, this is where we have our evidence. One of our evidences of God is our personal experience, and it does manifest in a physical way. So God can manifest in a physical way. Well, yeah, I mean, ultimately, He did in Jesus Christ. So, so we can test God. Yeah, I'm not saying we can't test huh. for God. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No. no good. I'm yeah. Okay. Saying, so why, saying, why haven't we done I'm that? Saying, and why haven't we found Him? I mean, Gideon saying, did it in the Bible. I mean, there's a lot of people that have tested God and yeah. gotten results. So why is God still hiding? Why haven't we finished this theory and made it more of a reality? What? Why? Why is that? Well, I don't. I don't think he is hiding at all. In fact, again, okay. he revealed himself in, in human as the word became. Well, that was like when there was Jesus no cameras, Christ. though, John. I mean. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I want to reveal okay. myself to the world, I want to make sure there's a camera in front of my face. But, you well, know. but we, we believe a lot that was revealed to the world at that time through wars and things that, that there were no cameras, but there were documentation and archaeology. And, right. and we have that similar type of support. It's a little bit different. But the though, point yeah. I'm making bit, is yeah. the, 
Well, the point I'm making with that is, so he has revealed himself. I don't believe he's so hidden. Um, he's not hidden in my life. I know many okay. people that I can talk about, and you can probably go around not churches hidden. all over the world on a weekly oh, basis yeah. and hear testimonies of how he's not hidden. I hear it all the time. And that's what I'm, time. and that's where I'm saying the physical does manifest the 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 evidence of God does get manifested in the physical every but the time problem, we John, have a life that's changed, a drug addict that stops doing drugs. And that's so different, though, John. These are feelings. And 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 changes of, of of mind or ideas. This is not an actual physical evidence of a being doing something in reality. These are just people changing their minds. These are just thoughts. No, it, or or it feelings. Just, again, on a, <laughs> I would challenge that on a phys- <laughs> philosophical plane to mm-hmm. say that at the end of the day, all an experiment is huh. is an experiential event, meaning I do something. And I experienced something with my senses to tell me that that was true. Right. But the how do we is hot test and that? And I touch it and it burns me. Right. But how do we test well, that I, to know that those, those feelings or those senses are from a particular invisible person? How can we test that? That because when we have those life changing experiences, that is just as much an evidence, an experiential evidence as me touching a flame and it burning right, but my that finger. particular person being that is causing it whatever's causing that that reaction of the human being whatever's causing are that, you asking to know specifically who that god is exactly how that? can we test okay. like is there a jesus test we can do to make sure that it's jesus causing these things and not kalima and not or krishna. spider-man exactly yeah. and, and not krishna yeah, I need the millions of gods that. that are out there, you know. I mean, sure. we made a red think, light god the other, like, a couple months ago. So, I mean, there's, there's now there's a new god out there. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I think where that would come down to is a a studying and understanding mm-hmm. of religions and their, in a sense, their evidence, their texts, their scriptures. Okay. And a comparison and a judgment based on uh-huh. those. And I think when you do that and you and you go through that practice, then you will see that when people trust in that scripture, that evidence, that test that they do, whatever, uh-huh. and they call out to that God, that is what I would test. That's what makes so, it real? So if people are healed well, or saved or that's comforted not what you're under asking. Kali Ma, does that make Kali Ma real? It can make it extremely real to them. To yes. them, exactly. But doesn't make it a real person or a real being that's actually doing it. That's just the person. Well, right. the, that's why I'm yeah, saying the it's human, the personal yeah. experience. Yes, that's I'm I'll, I'm, I'm granting that. I, that's yeah. why I said it's the personal experience. Yeah. What I've experienced in my life is no bearing to you. It's no evidence to you. Right. But what I'm right? saying is, how do we? How do you know? Or the Kali Ma person who says that Kali Ma healed them or made them feel mm-hmm. more comforted. How do they or you know it's your specific invisible friend? Is there a test for that? I mean, we can read the Bible all day long, but well, that's, that's not going to give us any evidence towards what's causing yeah. your happiness or whatever. Right. It could be so, a happy monster for anybody knows, you know. <laughs> so this is this is why I was saying comparing the the texts or, or or the experiences or the gods in a sense. Yeah. Um, I would say that in my experiment, my experience, my salvation, I've mm-hmm. reached out to Jesus Christ, and I've had received from Jesus Christ, and through well, the Bible, from something. I'm, well, well, yes, but again, through that's where I was getting to through the text, through the understanding of who Jesus is. I have identified everything that I know to be that name, to be that God. Uh-huh. Someone else can say the same thing to Kali Ma. Yeah. Now, what I would say is the comparison there is I put my faith in Jesus Christ. They can put their faith in Kali Ma. I'm not saying they're wrong. They can do that. I will do this. And in the end, ultimately, that's when the true test comes about. Who was really right? Was the atheist right? Was it? So we have to wait to the end to find out. Well, I mean, that's that's ultimate. That's ultimately, you know, the Blaise Pascal wager. It's ultimately, it's ultimately the final test. I would say is that there's no way of knowing. We all know. It could be a a psychic alien from Mars. No way of knowing. That is, I you know, sending you these things. It could be Satan himself just tricking it, you. And it, and you wouldn't know until it you die could that be, it was it could Satan. Be, it could be from a theoretical possibility. But again, from a faith standpoint of 
we trust in something because of where the logic and reason takes us. Mm. That doesn't line up with it being Satan. It lines up with it being Jesus Christ. And there's a lot of reasons for that. I don't want to make it sound that simple, yeah. but there's, there's a lot that goes into that based on, again, the scriptures, the teachings, the understanding of the universe and what the Bible, how the Bible treats it, how the Bible mm. says it. It's the whole everything that we've been studying for thousands of years. There's a lot there. But based on all of that, that's where my faith is in Christ. Faith. Someone else's faith can be in humanity, can be in Kali Ma. Yeah. And in the end, and I'm, I'm not saying that from an arrogant standpoint of in the end, you know, you'll, you'll know. Find but out, yeah. in the yeah. end, yeah. obviously in the end, we will find out, you know, whether we non-exist or we, Krishna was the right way or Christ was the right way or whatever. That's where the faith part comes in is I can't say for 100% certainty but I can say that I've devoted my life to it just as based on the logic and reasoning of the Higgs boson particle, God particle, they based thousands, millions, and, and all of what they did into that. Things based I'm in reality, though, in physical evidence, this. though. That's, that's, again, that's reality and physical evidence. Well, but again, I have that physical evidence. It's, 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 it's not a Bigs hosen, though. It's, or, <laughs> I totally butchered that word, but you know what I mean? It's not that particle. Okay. It's, it's, it's your life is better. I'm guessing. Well, we can get into that. That's actually where we're heading yeah. now because yeah. I want to I want to know why John became a Christian. What happened, John? What what made you decide uh, that Christianity was the right path? Give me three um, good top reasons, top reasons. You know, you don't have to give me every single one of yeah. them. No, but I would say so first thing that I think is in, is important is it is something that happened to me at a younger age. Uh, I think I was 12, it's exactly 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. Um, before that, we weren't really that religious, um, other than nominally, you know, I was born Roman Catholic and Greek Orthodox, more Roman Catholic and, but really neither of the two, but I had an awareness and I'll try to make it, you know, give you the, the cliff notes. Um, yeah. The, the strong thing that really, you know, pushed you over that. That's like, you know what, this Christianity yeah. thing, that's for me. You know, what was and that? I would, and I would say in me, it was a combination of things in my life that even at that young age um, had turned, turned me into, or I was becoming um, what I would, what I would define as not a good person. Just oh. my anger, my jealousy, my anger, my, 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 my jealousy, heart, I guess would be the easiest way to say it. Yeah. So anger and, and jealousy were what detail. made you not a good person. Well, no, not, I mean, a lot of things. I, I, I said those too, but it was more just a lot of, yeah. Feelings well, inside of me of that. Yeah. And, 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 and I had this awareness of the way I put it is not so much that I was doing wrong, but I became aware that I was wrong. That I had because of the anger and the jealousy side of me. Because, yeah, of, because yeah. of potentials of just bad. So you were starting to come to realization things. that being a jerk maybe wasn't such a great idea. Yeah. And, and I don't yeah. even know that it was that I was classified as much of a jerk i mean oh, so you weren't i did I, I did get into i did get into trouble i was a kid you know what i mean i, I hadn't, <laughs> uh, hadn't yeah. committed any major crimes or anything to that extent yet you know i hadn't um done anything extremely horrible but i think to me what the tipping point was my father went to prison i was uh nine years old going on 10 and that's kind of where a lot of that started coming in you know mm -hmm. and there was fighting and suspensions in school and hmm. just thoughts and the jealousy part thoughts. was where I would see, you know, my friends um, who had what appeared to be, at least to me, you know, loving fathers and they'd go on a fishing hmm. trip or I'd get to go with them or something. And I was jealous and, and it wasn't a, a jealousy of only like, I wish I had that in my life. I wish I had a dad that was like that. It was a jealousy that made me feel like, why couldn't I have this? Like, hmm. like, why did I get strapped with this guy and you got yeah. this guy and all of these emotions, all of these feelings, there was, there's a lot there. Right. And all of that mm. in me kind of the best way I can explain it was at a young age, I had that awareness of, I was wrong. Mm. I was trapped in this, this body, this frame, this mindset, this, this soul of depravity. I didn't know the word depravity at the time, but I come to, <laughs> to learn that and understand it. But just more again, it wasn't so much that I was doing wrong things that but that in me there was a wrongness. And uh 
and I was seeking, you know, I would ask my mom if we could go to church and she would be like, Oh, sure. But she didn't know where to go, what to start, mm-hmm. what to do. You know, and I went with some of my aunts to the Catholic church and, and, um, long story short, you know, we eventually met, um, a person who my mom worked with and he kind of explained the gospel to me. It's, you know, he, he, they, um, it was kind of like a family thing. They came to dinner and explained to my family and it was, you know, in depth of the depravity of man, the sinner, the, the forgiveness just to how God. Horrible and it we just are. resonated. We deserve with me. Well, no, but it, again, it's not that. And... It, well, no, no, it's not, it's not so much that. It's not this hellfire and brimstone punishment, how, what a bad kid you are, John. It was mm. not, nothing of that at all. He spoke more about that condition that I felt that oh. I resonated with of us as humans are, se- we're separated from God. And that's what made me feel wrong. I was not in right, is you know the way I would say. Separated it. from God this, made you feel wrong. Yes. Explain that a little bit, a little bit there. Um, like, how does that how does that work? You you didn't really you so knew about I, this God. I, I would, but you didn't. So, I mean, vaguely, yeah. Yeah, you vaguely knew like, about oh, this God, but when you found out that you were separated from Him, you knew that was wrong. Why? Yeah, because because what the gospel teaches us, what we understand from Genesis. Through, through to John or even all the way to Revelation is hmm. that man is separated from God, that there's something... Yeah, but why did you happened, feel it at that something... moment, John? I, well, I didn't know that I felt separated from God, but I knew that I felt things I wasn't... No, why right. did you feel it was wrong again at that moment? At the moment he was telling me the... the yeah, you said you, you, he told you you were separated from God and it felt wrong. Because the way he explained, um, the, the, and again, I got, I got to go back several years now, so I don't remember exactly what he said, but I know it was the gospel gist, mm. you know. So the way you explain the gospel to someone and, and say that man through sin is separated from God, and as such, we make the wrong decisions. As such, we do the wrong acts. We seek for ourselves mm. over Instead anything of for else. Him. We, well, uh, over anything else. It's not just about him, but it's about each other as well. It's it's hmm. we, we're we do things for our for ourselves, and when you look at the world in that way, as a young kid, that to me said, I I resonated with that, and I said, that's what I'm feeling. Hmm. I'm feeling this separation. I'm feeling this anger. I'm feeling this things aren't right. I'm feeling this, you know, whether it was abandonment by my father, had a very loving mother who was very present as much as she could with all the work she had to do to keep us together as Mm. a family. But, you know, I I didn't lack from that love, but I definitely lacked from a father's love. Um, I had that separation and that separation resonated with the separation from God. And it resonated with the emotions, the feelings, the anger to that point. No, no, God, I never met to that point. But you felt the separation. It tripped, it triggered. As if it was your own family. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know how much I can delve into exactly that, mm-hmm. but I think so. I think it was a few, cause do you think God sent you I, that feeling or the Holy ghost or, you know, whoever? Yeah. I, uh, I mean, I, I, it, I think when that happens in a person's life, the way I understand God, the way I understand this whole thing, I think it's, when we take a step, he takes a step towards us. We take another step, he takes another step towards us. And he's coming closer and closer to us to the point where hmm. once we get to a certain closeness, you can feel it. It's almost like in a weird way, I'll, I'll, I'll say it this way. If you've ever seen those TikTok videos of the kids who see their father from or mother from, uh, you know, they come back from war. And they're no. at their school play yeah. or something like that. I'm sure that. it's great and then, though. <laughs> and then they, you know, they don't know the parents there and they're, and all of a sudden it kind of focuses and they're like, oh my gosh, that's my father. And they go running towards them. That's the way I feel. It's like, we get to a point where it's like, yeah. it starts off as a step of, I'm kind of seeking, hmm. I'm not sure what I'm going for. And, and as God draws closer and we get closer, all of a sudden it clicks. That's interesting. That's it. That's who I wanted. That's what I wanted. And that's the way I felt when he was talking. And so then, you know, he says, do you want to pray and accept Jesus into your heart and all these types of things? And not that it's a magical formula. <laughs> it's not the formula. It's not the words. It's the, 
surrendering of surrendering. yourself and saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah just, absolutely. I, I'm it's not very good at surrendering of yourself. Never give up. <laughs> well, Never surrender. Well, I mean, that's, that's <laughs> but I did. Uh, I did that whole talk to God thing. I did that whole, hey, come to me, God, show yourself. He never showed up for me. Apparently, I'm just not good enough. Something was wrong there. No. But what I want to know, though, is you. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, definitely. Said, I said you're, def you're definitely worth it. I won't well, say you're good enough because I appreciate again, that. The Thank good you. is where I have an issue, but, but God didn't. It, and he, and still he hasn't thought that. I'm worth it. He still hasn't shown up. I mean, I've been doing this for quite a while, and he's never shown up. That's okay. Um, yeah, but you're you did mention but you're talking to me, so he's trying to reach you. <laughs> John, I love it. Thank you. Though. <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate that. I, I've heard that from a lot of guests, but I appreciate it. Um, good. You, you had it's mentioned true, that. Go ahead. Um, what made you not a good person was the anger and jealousy, specifically those two I mean, things. No, I don't want to say like that was it. It was not just those things, but again, those were two things you specifically had mentioned. On top those of, are, I know yeah, those, those are there things that came to my head. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say the biggest feelings I had at that time was there was a lot of jealousy, a yeah. lot of anger. Yeah, yeah, and so those two, those two were big. But again, I don't want to focus on. The specifics of what i did because that, that's what i that's what i came to realize yeah. and i know it sounds crazy but at a young age i did realize it wasn't the things it was who i was it was me i was yeah. wrong it wasn't I that, that i too. was doing wrong yeah no 100 percent. yeah i was wrong in that situation i should have i could have reacted differently i could have done differently these are things i learned along the way um but what I, i'm very curious as to the, the whole anger and jealousy thing these are two things you find bad These are bad attributes, right? Um, well, yeah, when they're done out of the selfish reason. Selfish, I mean, exactly. I, th exactly. I think I know. I, I think I know where you might want to go with that about God and His anger and God and His jealousy. Is it not um, selfish? But yeah, I, is no, it I not all about so. Him? Is His jealousy I because other people are worshiping other gods? Does He get jealous when other people worship gods that aren't Him? Yeah. That's that's and he gets angry, and that's very self centered. It's selfish, John. Well, but no, see, that's the thing. It depends on the why is it not selfish? Because if I'm selfish for a good reasoning, meaning that, okay, that's not a good reason, some, John. Praising oneself is not a good reason. Well, well, hold on. You you didn't let you, you didn't let me answer it. So okay, so so they're not trying to use an example. I'll I'll deal with something specifically in those situations. If I'm a jealous God. If I say I'm a jealous God and I don't want you serving other gods, the reason behind that is not because I need you to worship me. It's because you're going after a false God that will lead you to destruction. And who's going to destroy them? Eternity themselves. They will not kill themselves. God will do the no, punishment. They not, they God is the one who themselves. lashes out irrationally when they do th worship other gods. That's the that's, yeah, that's what's coming towards well, them is the the wrath of God, the anger of God. He gets super jealous, super mad, and then he lashes out irrationally at them. He even causes their wives to be assaulted by other men. That's how irrational his judgment is. So, so if we want to deal with the specifics, then we're gonna we can go to a Bible passage and study and, and talk about it in in context and in the in the meaning of it. But okay. let's go to the speak of it. If we're gonna one, then if we're gonna uh, speak, let's go to the well, punishment say, from the golden well, calf. Sorry, go Hold ahead. On, let me let, let me speak. So, if we're going to speak about it in those in the general terms as we were, the point that I was making is that if you're worshiping of other gods, so go back to the Kalila. I said Kalima. In the yep. end, Kalima. Sorry. Okay. Um, in the end, they will. We will know. Was I right? Were they right? Was the atheist right? Right. God What's going to happen already. at the end? Right. So suspend suspend the understanding for a moment that there is the one true God. So He knows already that. The Kalima is fake, and that will lead that person into destruction because that person will be in rejection of the one true God, which means I don't want to be with this God, which means then I can't be in the presence of God, which does mean that I will suffer destruction on myself. By the hands of God. Any, well, by the repercussions of God. Well, God made the rule, words, did he not, John? Well, okay. When you, when you jump into a burning building— and the uh -huh. flames burn you, you uh -huh. don't say, I died at the hands of the flame. The flame uh, attacked I, me. The I flame died at the God who made flames it's hot. It's the repercussions. <laughs> these well, are, these are his you, rules, you though. 
John, these are his well, rules. His, he set in motion. Well, correct? hold on, hold on. His his rules are: if yeah. you do not want to be with me in if you my don't presence, worship me, uh huh, then you do not have to be with me in my presence. Right, but what's the alter? But what's the alternative? Destruction. Why? Complete Why did God choose to have destruction be the alternative? John, this is my issue. Because, it's either okay, because, happy, joy, joy in so, heaven, or destruction. So. You have to understand, again, suspend with me the one true God, you know, suspend with me the Christian okay. God so we don't get caught arguing whether or not that exists. Well, let's, 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 let's we have that person attributes. who set the rules. Let's keep him in there. That's the guy that set these so, rules up. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. let's deal specifically with him. So okay. yeah. the way that God is, one of his attributes is he's omnipresent, meaning he's everywhere. So okay. if you do not want to be with that God, yet that God is everywhere, uh -huh. where could you be without him? Oh, I know. I know Where? Uh, a place he can create that he's not. But he can't because he's everywhere. He can't create a place he, he's it, not. No, he absolutely couldn't. That would be illogical. He can't be. Well, illogical. he's not inside he of my he heart. He can't right lie, now, John. So there's one place he, he's not, and he it's is, fine. I think he is. Om he is omnipresent, <laughs> so he is everywhere. Whether you recognize him or not, that's another argument. Well, that's invasion of privacy. He him. needs to get out of my body. I like that autonomy well, thing. We were talking about earlier. I don't, I don't, I don't literally believe that Jesus is pumping inside of my heart. That's pounding. Okay. Those are, you know, those. But are he's inside of you. He's but, part of you. He's everywhere. Well, let's let's not so get sidetracked. Let, let me go back. Let me go back to the right. Let me go back <laughs> to the God space. being everywhere. So if God is, so if God is omnipresent, uh huh. My belief, and I just was on a podcast talking about this, and I think the Bible does support this strongly. Actually, my mm -hmm. belief is that those who reject Him will eventually suffer the second death, which Revelation talks about, which is an eternal destruction. You are gone. You no longer exist. So There's he can do that, existence. but he can't create a place where I can live happily without him. No, because he's everywhere. He's omnipresent. Well, that's and ridiculous. you can't live happily without him because without I'm doing him, it right now, John. Every, everything would collapse. You're, you're not. You're not aware of him. You're not recognizing him. But everything John. that you have, the air you breathe, the universe you exist in, everything is predicated on this God's being. He's he's the necessity of everything. That's throwing to a lot of out there. That's throwing a lot out there. That's a lot. It is. That's but, a lot. I I, I kind of rely on the, the point, trees for my breathing. Being though, in that, not your personal invisible guy over there. <laughs> that would even if I did. Hold on, well, Jesus, stop the trees. I'm just going to rely on you. You know, it's not it's not a good idea. Let's not do that. Um, no, yeah. but I, I think you're smart enough to understand though, what I mean by <laughs> the breath. And, and the, again, he's the, he's the sustenance of the universe. That makes no he's, sense, he's though. what everything is. Okay, so the only it thing I can think of sense. is there's a character uh, in Marvel, I think his name is Eternity. He's like essentially the universe and like the outline of him is... I'm not aware of him. ...person yeah, and like the inside of the universe or something. Is that kind of what it is? There's this... He's everywhere because he is well, everywhere. I, I, let me understand um, this. You're trying to well, you're trying to apply a physical to that's again, how this works. John. God, God is oh, I can God only work in physical. reality. <laughs> no, no, because the way that you're the way that you're trying to process the information is not yeah. a physical thing. It's a metaphysical thing. You know, logic and reasoning is not part of the physical. It's beyond the physical. It exists mm -hmm. outside of the physical. Anyway, um, so I don't know about that character specifically, because again, if that's a physical person. What I'm saying is mm. God is spirit, so God is ever present. That's one of the characteristics we claim. I don't, yeah, but that doesn't so make sense only though, way... to me. How does that work though? How is it like oh you see it just it it hurts my brain. It, so okay, God is use, everywhere. Use energy as as an as an example. God is energy just is energy. Everywhere, correct? Well, energy no, is a thing just. we can test you put again. The word that's just in. Physical. Yeah. But what, what but God's we, not. What we don't understand is number one, what energy is. And we don't have a physical representation of energy. We have manifestations of energy. We have way more representation of energy than we do of God. Uh, I think that, well, I don't know. I mean, I, not, to be honest, I never looked into that. I was going to say it's debatable, so I guess it's debatable. But again, it's debatable, but go, we're sitting here using if electricity. You, if you go and, and I can if you actually go, feel the effects of energy. Yeah, so. but if you, again, in my life, it's as present as the electricity. So I would say for me, you but do John, not recognize it. And that's the big deal. God doesn't you power your house. Paint. No, but God has provided, again, him being the necess ne necessary. Something has entity, provided. That necessary and you've being. given it. He, Jesus, he has put all it. things in motion. He's provided everything. He's the immovable mover. 
go back to Aristotle with that. You know, he's he is the logos. Go back to the ancient Greeks with that. He's the he's the the it in everything. And this has been noticed from mankind since we've had recorded history. But the Jesus is something. the it in everything. No, John John told them that, but the oh. Greeks said there is an it in everything. They called it the logos, hmm. and and it was the yeah. it was the something. They couldn't they put also their fingers crazy on it. And, you know, their drinking water was. Well, Poisoned. Well, but I mean, we we attribute we, a lot we of what we give know them too much credit to what the Greeks <laughs> did. Well, we give them a lot of credit. I mean, we can't but slow down with them. <laughs> <laughs> they still shit in public too. I mean, <laughs> well, anyways, that's a whole other time. Unfortunately, I've been to Greece and I've seen some of the ancient, yeah, <laughs> it's ancient just weird. cities. I love it. I love it. Would have been interesting to see. I didn't the smell say I had all there. the answers. No, yeah, <laughs> definitely not. Oh man. Okay. So anger, let's go back to God's anger and jealousy. Okay. Uh, yeah. is, is there a point in the Bible anywhere you see his anger lashing out that you have an issue with? Oh yeah. There's things that I look at and I say, wow, you know, that is, that is harsh. Yes. Such as, is there one you can think of? Um, yeah, there's, there's a few, I, I would say primarily, even though you know, I can understand the reasoning why it, and because the Egyptians instigated the killing of the firstborn, mm. God still killed their firstborn. Even though the mm. Canaanites instigated the killing of the children and the, the old and the weak, God still commanded us or commanded Israel to go in and kill their children, their weak, their everything. Yeah. You know, that level of, um, let's call it retribution, eye for mm. an eye, is very harsh. But again, there's a story here from Genesis mm. to Revelation that tells a broader picture of things. And one mm. of the things you have to see in that is Paul sums this up in Romans seven perfectly when he says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And this is what the old Testament is primarily teaching us. And we know this because this is exactly how Jesus revealed it is you want eye for an eye, but what you need to recognize is you're just as guilty as those that you're attacking. So God used this period of time to reach man, to get man to understand, as yeah. Paul again says in Romans, that the purpose of the law wasn't so that we would keep the law, it was so that it would reveal to us our sin. Yeah. So these things that God do, does in the Old Testament, he doesn't change in the New Testament, but it was a means of reaching man, of telling the story, and people can say, well, that's being a little flippant with human lives and different things. And Absolutely. You know, we could go down that, that's we could disgusting. go down that topic and and talk about you know the Canaanite children and, and we would not choose that way. John. What would happen That's, to them? Yeah, absolutely. We, we both we both have a problem. You have a problem with it as well as I have a problem. Yeah, with it. but you justify have, it. That's the well, difference. What I what I do is not justify it. I understand that what was going on at that time, and this is again what we learned from Hebrews is that these things happened for us to understand. So there was a period in history. There was a period in history that God interacted with man and this is the old testament period but there's a period in history where god interacted with man in a sense on man's level so that man would hopefully see hopefully. his depravity his wickedness right hopefully because god allows for free will i'm a strong proponent because god of free doesn't will. know um what's no, what's going to change knows. the hearts and minds oh he does so he could yeah. have chosen to change the hearts and minds but he chose to slaughter children instead well no if i change your heart and mind you don't have free will he does it in the Bible. He did it with Pharaoh. He changed his heart and mind. Like so, in the same story we're again, talking about, I'll, he did it. I'll go, I'll go to what I'll He go also to what, showed up for Paul. Gideon, like showed up. He showed up for the Israelites, all these things he could have done. But you you had mentioned that it paints a broader picture. Well, and I've heard this before. Well, it paints a broader picture. So it's great. It says, okay, it's okay. God slaughtered these children, these innocent beings for no reason other than to show off his glory, no, which I'm he not says. Saying it's, I'm but the not problem saying it's okay. is we can do the same thing as the broader picture of World War II. World War is crap we should not have war but bad things still happen at the hands of monsters just like these stories bad things happen at the hands of monsters what are monsters monsters are people that kill children kill children slaughter innocent children god did these things god did these things and it's okay nope never said it was okay so two things so one is, you're, you tell God that it's is, not okay for him to kill kids, but you on, still worship we, him. We have to, well, you're conflating things for a second. You have to I deal conflating? with two 
separate. You have to deal with two separate things separately here. And there's a lot that you said earlier that I'd love to chase, but I'll, I'll just keep following where we go. <laughs> um, first, there is, I absolutely would say there is a difference between when God does something and when God commands others to do it. Okay. It, these when two God, stories, well, let's, let's start with the first one, the Pharaoh one. Let's just stick to that one. God did it. Go ahead. God did which, not command what him, but did specific, What are you saying specifically of what when he, God did? When he crept into the, the beds specific. of the sleeping kids and killed them. Okay, when he killed the, the firstborn. Yeah. Yes. So this was judgment against Egypt. Not those and kids. Keep in mind, well, keep in mind that what Pharaoh had done previously was Pharaoh had killed all the firstborn of that the, that the makes Israelites. zero That's sense. We did not go out in. and slaughter the the German children when they killed the 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 Jewish children. We did not do that. Why? Because we're not monsters. We are not. We are not the creators of life. I don't care. Who, we are creators of life. I got two of them downstairs. Hundred percent. We are creators create of that. life. Came from came from your body, but you absolutely did not create that. You couldn't. Add there was a no magical life. being involved. You it's couldn't. called the process of. Giving birth and, and stuff. I mean, come on, man. Well, that's 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 where the magical being there's no, operates. There's no it's, miracle it's in, in his. It's in his world, so it's it's all a product of his. Yeah, anyway, world, let's actually, go back. Let's go back. Okay. let's go back to it because if you, this is the area where you know. Apologize if I'm about to piss you off because I've done it several times. To, to You're not going to do it. It's really, really really difficult to do. But go ahead. <laughs> okay, good, good. So let's let's chase this because again, dealing with it on a phys- philosophical level, if you think of the situation that the Christian God represents, which is that in the moment you pass, the moment you die, you are either present with the Lord or I'm not sure where you are at that point, but you're, I don't know, let's just say you're in a, you're in a darkness of sleep or something, right? Okay. Now, what we understand about children from the Bible is that they Mm. are not Mm. guilty immediately on birth where i disagree with any preacher that will say that several well, times I mean, but spe- we've got the bible that says Deuter- as soon as you're born you're sin you're born sinful no is that not no, right it, it says it says i was born into into sin yeah because this world is sinful yeah. so you're born into a, into a sinful world you're born sinful but god that's what but that god means. specifically but god specifically tells the israelites in the beginning of deuteronomy when he tells them that you will not be entering the promised land because of your disbelief because of again the golden calf and all that However, your children who do not know between the right and wrong, the good and the evil, they will enter the promised land. We have this thing in the Bible that's present of an, of an age of, of accountability. So I don't you see can it. Say what this verse is how I says age it. of accountability? Is there a, a it specific it age? It doesn't say age. No, not age of accountability, but I'm saying no specific we age. call it that. Yeah, yeah. we call it that. I, but I don't there's know nowhere in the Bible that says where it would be. Well, no, but there is passages yeah. in the Bible that let us know that children at an, are at an innocent, an innocent mm. at a younger age. So, in other words, I, 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 I strongly you think, disagree you with you on that one. Way. Go ahead. I, I strongly okay, disagree, well, if, but go ahead. <laughs> if you think if you think of it this way, Adam and Eve were created. Mm. They were not in sin until they made a free will choice to be in sin. They made a choice to rebel That's against different. God. They made a they choice were born. to disobey. All... No, it's not have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And then you said you're born into well, sin. You, you are, are you, born into gonna split into, so, yes. Yeah. I'm born Adam and Eve were not born. Sin, they were made. Sin. Right. So they and weren't yet, born into sin still, like the rest of the world because Adam's it's okay. That's okay. Go continue. And, on. Well, we can argue well, about that and, one next and time. Yet, <laughs> so, and yet they, they still, they still chose a free will choice to rebel against God. And that was what we call sin entering the world. Now we're all born into that. So when David says that, number one, he, he's in a psalm, so you know you got to give him some poetic license when he says it. But anyway, <laughs> when that is said, anything that we're told about that is not that we're born as a sinner, specifically sinning on the day we're born. We are born into this, again, what I recognized at a young age, this sin, this sinful world, this, mm-hmm. this being of propensity to rebel, the propensity to do horrific things, not even necessarily that I've done that. <laughs> Not no. even necessarily, but just in this separation from God. So the kids were, were not sinful, that. is what you're saying. They went to heaven. Correct. So, so these my, kids who worshipped other gods went to heaven to meet the Jewish God? Well, the difficulty there with the Egyptians is we don't know how old a firstborn was, right? Killed all the firstborn. 
so we are going to guess from age be on a case by case. zero to 100. Right. Because it's an entire okay. city full so, of people. So you're going to go from zero to 100. There's a thousand and one percent chance there's going to be children there. God yes. 100% so those, killed children in that situation, if that is true. Yeah. 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 So, the, so let's so the, focus those, on that part. Those okay. kids. So those that would be younger. Yeah. The youngest, the youngest one uh-huh. is what I'm saying. That's where I'm saying. There so they went this, to heaven. This level of, yes, I would say that in God's judgment, God is fair and that mm. he, he would have been mm. fair to that. Mm. Absolutely. I don't think it's fair to, to kill children um, that didn't do anything wrong. So well, 100%, I mean, in, in, that's, in all, that's by really... all measures, we don't think it's, by all measures, we, we shouldn't think it's fair to kill anyone. Right. You just I said mean, it was fair though. No, I'm saying by all measures, we shouldn't think it was fair to kill anybody. Yeah. So From God did that. Think. He killed them and understand. then they went to heaven. So why? So well, do you have a problem with abortion? Yeah. Okay. So why? Uh, They're going to it, heaven. Again, because what you're doing is you're 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 putting God or you're you're either putting God on our level or us on his level. And How do you know I'm this is not is, part of God's plan? It's, it's different to kill innocent children. Yeah, God does it all the time. How do you know this is not part of his plan? Because he literally commands that in the Levitical laws that we are not supposed to be doing that. And he makes that point. Not supposed to kill children. Well, he Isaac, commands people to kill children all like the time. And then he does it himself. So, I mean, how do we know that this isn't a command or part of God's plan? How do so, you know? Uh, so, again, let's, let's not deal with us and what we're doing. Let's deal with God and what he does. God because is, again, is in this world things. right now doing things, correct? Correct. So how you do you know creator it's life. not him? What is not him? I'm not following. Causing how do I know abortions that to killing? happen. Causing abortions to happen. God has because caused be- abortions on, to happen in the that. Bible. God has drowned children, starved children. He he, he sent people to slaughter children. You're, yeah. You're, so again, you're, his track yeah. record is is you know on track here. So how do we know God is not doing all of okay. this abortion? Let me let me answer your specific or question. behind it. How do okay. I know God is God is not doing the abortion? Is because yeah. humans humans walk into a clinic where another human performs the act. But God is everywhere. Okay. God is influencing decisions. God is interacting. But God in the world isn't with doing people. everything. Okay. See, this is a common mis- misnomer that atheists have, and 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 I don't know if it comes from. There are Christians that believe this way too. So I don't know where it comes from. So I won't say just atheists. Tell me, where am I wrong? What are they wrong? There's, there's, no, there's nowhere in the Bible that makes it out that God is pulling all the strings of everything happening in the world. In fact, what you see is the complete opposite when you look through the entirety of the Bible. So God God's not in control. In motion. Nope, didn't say that. Oh, well, so he so, is in control, though. So he is controlling this. Okay, listen. Otherwise, it's, an, it's a, either a if, controlled if system was, or a not controlled system. Which one is it? Ab- it's an absolutely controlled system. If I was okay, a so CEO God's of in a control. company, wait, hold on. If yeah. I'm the CEO of a company, do you think I'm answering every single phone call? Am I designing every single ad? Am I well, you're just human. You're not code? able to. Am God I doing is everything? To. He's all he's but all God powerful. Can, but God chooses out of his oh, power. So yeah. If he wanted, chooses. well, yes, of course he chooses because he could be all powerful to make us robots that forced love him to do everything he acts. But what is that? That's not a relationship. Nobody's asking that's, for that. I'm just asking him to show up and, and, and well, this you is, know. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is the world that God created, is he created a world that gave us an ability to govern ourselves, to make our huh. own free will choices. Did because he know the choices we that, were going to make? Or knew, yes. So God knew the choices or knows the choices we're going to make. Yep. Correct? Okay. Yes. Does God Why interact does create to, to help us make choices? I think he's I think he's interacting every day. Absolutely. And now we're right back to what I said. How do you know God is not interacting in reality, in life, in our world, causing us to go and do all of these abortions? Because he has laid it out that for us to kill or murder a human, let's even take the baby out of it and just Johnny it has. With human, is wrong. Again. See, this is where you're conflating. You ask me about us doing something, John. and I tell you why God is commanded yeah. to us. You say, but God has. And Fine. so Let's, are we going to talk yeah, about has. what God does, or are we going to talk about what we do? Well, in this instant, we're talking about now, God has told us to do these things. His track record goes with this kind of thing. 
God gets mad, children get punished. I am a jealous God, punishing the children. That's what it says. If, if several places. If you if you want to talk about from God's perspective, let me. I'll yes. make it. I'll make it this simple and easy. And yeah. And like I said, it can make you mad. If God, <laughs> if God, it. if God has done it, uh-huh. or God has commanded it, right? Uh-huh. If God has done it or God has commanded it, that is judgment from God. If uh-huh. man has done it or man has commanded it, uh-huh. that is a judgment of man, a moral uh-huh. judgment, a decision, a determinant. Okay? okay. Man is not the creator and sustainer of life. Okay. God is the creator and sustainer of life. So we can talk about is that immoral and whatever if we go down that path of God doing it, but that is the key difference. That's why I'm saying you keep conflating jumping between man and God. If God does it, God is the creator and exists and, and sustainer of life. He is right. He is the one who put it all together. He right. is the one that determined. And this again, you see with Jeremiah and the in the clay pots of who are you clay to tell me the potter that yeah, you haven't all made about me himself. right or haven't done very or haven't done these things. Well, he thinks he's really great. Obviously, that's the way you see yeah. it. That's the way he you thinks see he's it. really great. Come on, again, man. You know he thinks he's really big, great. He says about it. There's a big story the there. So when we go to Leviticus well, twenty one well, nine. In specific, if he's if he's everything that's Sorry. defined, he is absolutely great. Well, so yeah, he does know he does know how great he is, and he's aware of the fact that we need to recognize that. Otherwise, again, we will be separated from him in eternal destruction. His choice, that's not mine. The punishment, his choice, it. not his choice. It's the byproduct. You don't want to be. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry. His in, that incapability everywhere. of creating someplace that he's not. He's incapable of doing that. So now I have to suffer. Thanks, God. You you have to not exist. You have to be gone. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks again, God. You, you, you do not wait. Well, you do not want to be in His presence. Right. So I can't exist so, because I don't want to be in His presence. What a jerk. Right. Because because where would you be? <laughs> Somewhere I mean, else. Think, think about think think about what you're what you're saying right now. This is equivalent John. Think to about what saying you're saying. You, your loving God the, refuses to create some place He's not, so I can exist without Him. He would rather me just be destroyed. What a jerk. <laughs> You're saying, I want to be, I want to exist in an existence that God is everywhere, but I don't want to be with God. Do you not see how illogical that is? I want to be existing in some place where he's not. Can I do that? Right. Can I do that? No, because he is everywhere. Because he cannot create somewhere where he's not. A negative zone. Give me a negative zone. (laughs) Come on, God. You you serve a very interesting being. John, he's to very me, interesting. To me, that's a very simple, logical thing. If something exists everywhere, how can you mm. be where it isn't? You this is also very me. simple, John. He is all-powerful, can do anything he wants, except make a place where he's not. Because it's illogical. He can't be illogical. If he was illogical, he couldn't be everything that he is. You're asking <laughs> for him to make something. You're saying, uh, I recognize <laughs> you exist everywhere, so give me a Love. spot where you aren't. That that makes sense. You're saying, give me an all powerful being that, that can't do everything. I think you don't understand what an all powerful being is. Having I think you're control, missing again, the back point. To the, but that's okay. Back We're both C- missing points. Back to, the, back to the CEO analogy a CEO yeah. has all the As power a human over being. everything in his company. But that's a human being. You're Fine. conflating God with a human being. You're, 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 you're putting them in the same page, John. Oh, Your God is bigger than a okay, human then, being and can I, do anything he wants. A CEO has limitations. He doesn't say I can do anything I want. He specifically says I cannot else. lie. Cannot lie. Cannot well, not tell the truth. That's Otherwise, a, that's he wouldn't a, be God. Oof, oof. Well, that's a whole other. Maybe maybe part two, John. Maybe part two. But I want to get there, back into this there, punishment there, thing. We're getting a little limitations off imposed on logic, and, and you have to go ahead. Let me, t- oh, let me write that down. Limitations. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Thank you so much. Um, well, let me give you a brief example of that. Mm. logic 101 a equals a a does not equal non a yeah but we're, we're not, even a is an a all-powerful a. A being not, that can do whatever it a wants does, john that's the difference let's say a is a is an all-powerful being and there you a go equals a a, right. a can also equal, equal b a can equal b because it's an all-powerful being and he can make a equal b god can make logical, one so plus no one equal four powerful. john god can no, do can't. anything no he can't he can create a world. That on God. So God cannot create a world where one plus one equals four. Is that what you're telling me? No, he can't. This is the only world God could create. 
I don't know what you mean by a definition of world, but what I would say is in reality, any existence anywhere, existence, the laws of physics still have to so, apply. Right. And this universe and there this reality, the laws. laws of physics are this way. So you're telling me in a different reality, in a different world, God could not create the laws of physics to go in a different way. He couldn't contradict the laws we have. Not in this world. Not in but if he world. created a different realm, universe, existence, so whatever saying, you want to call so it. So you're saying there could be another theoretical universe where one equals two. John, we're talking about an invisible man that gets angry at children. So, Well, and that's why I'm telling you. you if, know, if we're we're, we're in a very interesting world, logic, as is. <laughs> if everything he does is predicated on logic, on reasoning, on his omnipresence, his omnibenevolence, he's always good, he's all-knowing, he's all-powerful. If it's all of these things at once and simultaneously, then no, it's not possible for him to create a universe where one equals two. It's also not possible for him to make a judgment that would be immoral. And I'm it's not also not possible for him to slaughter theory. kids in their sleep and be all good. You can't slaughter you kids in, your not, sli in their sleep possible? and be all good. You can't be both, John. He, he passes judgment, and in that judgment, he is making the right choice. Otherwise, he is not the God that That's, we think I'm he telling is, you right now, John, think, or that I think he is. Slaughtering and, children and that, is not that's the right choice. The judgment of God is what we're dealing with. You're calling I'm it telling the slaughtering you, of children. The slaughtering of children. I understand is not why, the right why you're saying it yeah. that way. But yeah. but let's just say it's the let's just say at the time when it was the well okay the slaughtering of children. You're talking now about the Canaanites because we don't know about the Egyptians. They weren't slaughtered. They were put to death. They may have fallen asleep and they wake up in the presence of God. We don't know. Well, and that's the point that mm -hmm. I try to make in these things is as the atheist, you think he killed you know. them. You, I you know he killed them, the John. That's not the problem. The problem is he no. killed them, John. But that's the, it. The problem End of is story. The, the he killed them. That's the problem. The problem is the justification behind it. There is no justification ju behind it. Okay, from your perspective. John, what the justification you, you give me really doesn't it's not a really you even it's not even convincing to you. I'm not expecting to I'm not expecting to convince you. That's not what I'm trying to do with this. Well, don't give I'm me just justifications. Offering... You don't think I'm gonna be uh, that's fine. That's, yeah. that's all, all, I'm, all I'm giving you, <laughs> all I'm giving you is the stance that it was God's judgment. Yeah. That's yeah. all I'm giving you. In God's divine yeah. judgment, he judged that one way. In your judgment, you're judging it a different way. You have a different perspective than God does. Do you think it was a fair you judgment? You have a limited perspective. Yeah, it had to be. It had to be, otherwise he's not God. And I realized that you think, well, that sounds so naive. And that this is where the faith comes in. Faith is trust. I don't have all the answers. I yeah. can't tell you all the things as to why, but I can tell you if I back out of that micro view that you have right now of the specific killing of children, and I look at, again, the entirety of the story and what happens there and what is being said and how the lessons have been learned and what it's teaching us, I mm. see a benevolent good God that has nothing but the interest of mankind in their best interest at heart, and not his own selfish worship, but our existence in his mind. And yes, I trust that he made the right judgment. Absolutely, mm. I do. Mm. Without all mm. the answers, that's where faith comes in. Based on what I do know, I can make the, the judgment of trust that he has made the right answer. Otherwise, he is not the benevolent God, and I am duped. And in the end, it won't really matter anyway, because you and I will be both non-existent in carbon. <laughs> True. Um, man, this has been fun. We're, we're pretty much out of time, but I, and, man, there's so many other topics and things I want to touch on. So many things we both talked about. Said, Keep going if you want. I don't, I don't uh, mind it. I love it. We're going to have to do a part two, but I do want to end it on this last thing. We did talk about God's punishments and the ones that he asked people to do a little bit. We talked about okay. that. And I wanted, to, I wanted yeah. to touch on the golden calf. Okay. punishment um in exodus 32 27 through 35 um this is the one where god said he gets mad at them and tells them to strap a sword to your side go back and forth through the camp from one another killing your brother and friend and neighbor mm -hmm. so the levites did as moses and god had commanded and then that day three thousand of the people died why why because, did god uh... have to slaughter these people they went to hell or destroyed or whatever it is they didn't get to go to heaven they were worshiping a golden calf but god ordered their death in a because horrible the, grotesque way 
but why? Why yeah. do you think this? And there's, and there's a couple of those. Uh, again, in Ezekiel, I think it is with the uh, – Throughout the whole Bible, man. There's, 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 yeah. we, can, we can go, go all night. Go but, through yeah. those with the marks, marks on their forehead and spare them, and those who don't have the marks, you're going to kill them. Um, anyway, yeah, hmm. this again, I, I already explained, uh, the, the wages of sin is death. That's, the, that's one of the main themes of the Bible. Great. So God could have snapped his fingers death. and they could have died and went to destruction because they were worshiping the wrong God. But instead, God wants them to get line, strap swords to them, run back and forth and kill each other that way. Why do you think yeah, God the, would the, want them to do that? I think the reasoning behind God having them do that is so that they recognize the horrificness of it. Because if if it all happened in their sleep. <laughs> it wasn't horrific men, until that happened, John. It was fine. They were just worshiping well, but, a golden calf <laughs> until God came in and honest, said, do this. <laughs> but if the story said, if the story said they all died in their sleep that night, you wouldn't feel better about it. You would still be judging it based I on I would that. feel That's better about it, yes. Why did God it would do be it? a better. I don't, I mean, maybe it might, might feel slightly better. But again, I don't know. I don't know why specifically, but what I believe, hmm. what I think because there is no explanation to this. There is no teaching in the Bible to this. There is no, so we, we can only hypothesize. And since you've asked me, I will. <laughs> um, my feeling is that it has more to do with um, an under, an, a, a, a getting, getting them to see the horrificness of sin. And that's the because only way you could do the, it, huh? Well, again, the, the wages of sin is death. And this yeah. is repeated mm. throughout the law. Everything in the yeah. law, you know this. You, you'll you could probably quote a bunch of the verses of where you got to stone them, stone them here, stone them there, stone them there, stone them there, stone them all the time, <laughs> kill them. But yet, but yet, is that the heart of God? And my answer would be no. But Jesus gives us a hint to this when the Pharisees hmm. ask him, you know, Moses permitted yeah. us, us to divorce, to give a certificate of divorce to our wives. Hmm. Is divorce basically, is divorce right or wrong? And Jesus said, Moses permitted it because of the hardness of your heart. So all this, again, starts with the hardness of man's heart and God trying to show man how the heart, as the Bible says, Try. is wicked above all things. Yeah. And that's what the Old Testament is laying out. It's horrific is, from that yeah. standpoint. Then this Jesus is trying, comes on the this scene. Is, I wouldn't try like this. If I'm trying to explain something to somebody and the horrificness of it, I wouldn't say, go strap swords to your sides and kill each other. No. Now you when understand how horrific the sin is that you've created. I mean, when you create a universe, you can not make very logical. Decisions. Yeah, you know, I, I would be a little more logical and, and, and friendly. That's for sure. Well, but John, this well, has you been it. Have... Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No, I was you just wouldn't have make a comment. I was going to say you wouldn't have logic in your universe because you can't. Have ah, it without that, I so. love it. I love it. Thanks, John. <laughs> no, this has been a blast. A, you know. It, yeah, no, I love it. In the spirit of things, man. In the spirit of things. Yeah, no, yeah. We, good conversation. I can't wait to do this again. Definitely have to have you back, man. Um, ton more things All I right. want to talk about. Um, but this is the yeah, end. This, uh, was, this was fun. Uh, plug your stuff. Where can we find you? Uh, any last words? Uh, simply enough, go to johnchristie.com. Um, Christie with a Y. Uh, mm -hmm. Christ Y. Think of it that way. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you can email me. You can listen to podcast episodes. I'll be putting a few on there I'll, I'll link to this one or, or post to this one um as well and uh yeah j basically john .com. that's good enough everything to know about me is there awesome thanks john appreciate the time stay safe out there thank you all right that's all the show there is for you today thanks for listening as always, you can find me at The Bible Says What YouTube and Facebook pages. You can also find clips of the show on TikTok under BSW The Podcast. If you like what you heard and want to help keep the recording light on, simply go to patreon.com forward slash BSW The Podcast and sign up to be a supporter of the show. Your episodic tithes of a dollar or more will get you early access to each episode by at least three days, stickers, shirts, and shout outs. That's patreon.com forward slash BSW The Podcast. For the latest events, BSW swag, including signed copies of The Bible Says What the Book, head on over to the show's ever-evolving webpage at thebiblesayswhat.com. And no matter which platform you use to listen to your podcasts, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on the next episode. Until then, would you kindly pick up your Bibles and read them?
next time on The Bible Says What. Mention that you listen to the show and that I have, uh, let's see here, simplistic conservative faith um, people on, and I playfully poke holes in their theology. It's a gotcha podcasting. I love it. And then you challenged me. So here we are. Let's see. What, debating yeah. with... Uh, uh, theology that isn't a straw man in my worldview. Uh, recommend some people. Hell, I'd even be <laughs> willing to come on. And here we are. Dan, yeah, the man. I'm, I'm regretting that last thing I said on there. 